Hello, everyone. Today I have with me Rachel Simon, who is a LinkedIn expert. And um, appropriately enough, this is streaming on LinkedIn. So we're being very meta today. And uh, LinkedIn is something that I have been hearing about the last couple of years, like it's really taking off. It's really a platform now. So it's taken a big shift to move my mind from LinkedIn is that place that you only go to when you're looking for a job to this is a social platform where I can meet people as especially a B2B business. Um, so I'm very excited to hear everything you have to tell us about how we can better utilize our LinkedIn. Yes. Well, I'm glad that the word on the street is that LinkedIn is the place to be because that's I definitely agree with that. It is not uh, the LinkedIn that it was five, you know, 10, a decade ago, and even five years ago, it's changed so dramatically over the last couple of years. And it really is a place to meet people that can help support your goals, both personal and professional. See, now that makes me wonder how you got started as being a LinkedIn expert. What inspired you to say, yes, LinkedIn is the place that I'm going to dedicate myself to? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story. So um, it was definitely not inspiration. Uh, it was really, you know, you, you know how you fall into some of the best things in life, right? You're like, oh, I didn't expect to be doing this. Um, so <laughs> that's exactly what happened. I, um, I had worked in the nonprofit world for 15 years. And um, in the summer of 2015, I left, I had been doing marketing. I actually launched a social media strategy for the organization that I worked for. Uh, and my husband encouraged me to, you know, he's like, I think you could do this marketing consulting, you know, freelance, because I was working part-time. And, you know, those of you who work in nonprofit, you know, part-time nonprofit means very little uh, income which is fine. It's very mission driven, you know, but it was time to make a shift. So I started, went out, kind of hung out my shingle to do some marketing consulting, got pulled into a client through a friend um, to do email marketing. And P.S. I'm not an email marketer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in one of the emails, they wanted to include a call to action to connect with their CEO on LinkedIn. So this was a company was in the healthcare space. Their CEO had was in his industry for 30 years, very well known, spoke at tons of conferences, you know, high regard by his peers. He had 12 connections. Whoa. Yeah, one, two. Not very many. Uh, yeah. For, for so, those who are unfamiliar, that is not many. That is not many. That says, I don't use this platform. <laughs> so when you put an, you know, a call to action in an email to connect with somebody who clearly doesn't use it, it's not going to be that successful. So he's going to double his following, I bet. <laughs> my recommendation, well, that, it's not hard to double your following. <laughs> um, so my recommendation was, why don't we build up his network a little bit, try to get to a point where it looks like he actually uses this platform. And then we can put that in an email. And so we that's what we started to do get him connected to his colleagues, to his customers, people he knew in the real world. Um, and then he got really into it. So we started a whole content strategy, a whole messaging strategy. I mean, years, a couple of years later, he had almost 10,000 connections. Um, in the first year, he attributed about eight new customers to his LinkedIn outreach. So that kind of a light bulb went up to say, I think there's something pretty powerful here. Um, and then the rest is history. Here we are. I incorporated my company, Connect the Dots Digital, in the beginning of 2018 to focus solely on helping professionals use LinkedIn in the most um, effective but authentic way possible to help them kind of reach their business goals. Mm. I feel like you caught a wave in a way because it's like the start of people realizing the potential of LinkedIn and and really getting into it. On the yeah. other hand, it's not like the wave is over because like now we get to learn from everything that you tried and that your clients tried to really get the best of the best. It's true. And the thing about LinkedIn is that, um, well, there's a couple of things. Number one, it is not a, a plug and play platform. So, you know, I'm not an Instagram person. I, I'm terrible at Instagram. However, 
you can set up a, your Instagram profile in a matter of minutes. It's not that complicated, right? You need a logo, you need a tagline, you need a description, you need a link. That's about it. And if there's like Maria to, is probably listening to this going, no, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you can create a lot of your other social media plat, uh, profiles pretty quickly. LinkedIn is very complicated. So there's multiple components to it. Each component has its own reason, strategy, the way to approach it. Uh, and it changes all the time. Like mm. it is constantly changing. So even to the point where there was one day I was doing training and I like clicked onto a screen and was like, well, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just, there's new updates coming all the time and it's very hard to keep up with. The average user uh, is, I think is almost impossible to keep up with because I think those of us who are in the know, who, where we live, sleep, eat and breathe this, it sometimes it, we were like caught off guard by all the updates. So that's why um, it's important to kind of at least understand the basics so that when the updates and changes come, you, you, it, it's familiar. And if we're connected to you on LinkedIn, then you'll keep us appraised of things that change, right? I will do my best. Yes. <laughs> I did make a lot of changes to my profile after you did a training for us in Success Champion Network. So I updated my headline and some of that really top of the profile stuff. But I definitely still don't feel confident about all the different sections and what I should be choosing and um, whether I should even have some of them. So that that part is still murky for me. Yeah, it is. Like I said, there's a lot. So the way that I, I like to kind of make it a little simpler. So to me, there's five key components to your profile. So if you have these five pieces, you're probably better off than a good number of the users on the platform. So those are your photos. So you want to make sure you have a nice photo. And I really like your profile photo. I love the, the glasses there. It's oh, such yeah. a fun picture. Um, you know, yeah, Melissa, you she's, she's amazing. Less glare. I know I have a problem with my, the glare too. <laughs> um, you want to make sure you have a banner image. That's the rectangle that goes behind your profile because that is basically a billboard. So especially if you're a business owner, if that's blank, it's a missed opportunity to mm -hmm. advertise your brand and your business. Uh, you want to have a good headline. So a headline that speaks to what you do, like the value that you offer, not your title and company. Uh, that's just not enough information. We need more information. Uh, and especially when you're out commenting, it's sort of an attraction marketing strategy. Like people are seeing that under your name. Like they're going to notice and go, oh, that's something I need. Let me go right. back. I, I would like to. I'll I want to learn more. I'm intrigued. Um, your about section. So that's your summary written in the first person and really written to speak to your audience, your customers. So lots of people write it all about them. This is everything I've ever done in my entire life. And that's why, and this is everything I'm good at. Mm. Instead of these are the problems that I solve. And this is why that I, help. And, yeah. I mean, it makes sense that we've fallen for that because it's like, here is your bio. Here is your about section. So, of course, we're like, OK, I'll talk all about myself. Right. <laughs> and you do want to talk about yourself and you do want yeah, to show the context you, of. Exactly. But put it into context. <laughs> um, so photos, headline about experience. So for the business owners out there, you want to have a company page, even if you're a solopreneur because for the brand to pull your brand into your profile, um, you know, for those of you, for people that are employees, making sure you're connected to your company page and that you have a description of what your company does and the accomplishments that you've had. So lots of people just plop their every, you know, all their responsibilities from their, whatever their most current re resume is. We want to know what did you achieve in these roles? Not that you were responsible for, X, Y, and Z. I mean, it's good to put that, but you want to put it again, put it into context of what did you achieve in that? And then your skills. Skills are, have gotten really important Ooh. because skills are indexed by LinkedIn through search. So if you want to be found for certain things, you want those words to be in your skill section so that the algorithm can find you when people are searching for various things. 
Oh, that's a good one. I think my skills are out of date. I think they're from 20 years ago when I was doing more creative writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you can tell that the telltale sign of um, out of date skills is when people have the whole Microsoft suite. <laughs> I know how to use word. <laughs> in 2022, we're going to make the assumption that you know how to use word. In 20. 10, we might have needed to know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love your tagline also of, what is it? Is your LinkedIn a liability or an asset? That is, that is so sharp. I absolutely love it. It's like. Thank you. The perfect question. Yeah. So, I mean, believe me, you, I have rewritten my LinkedIn profile multiple times over the years. And um, it's a struggle for me too. It's hard to write about yourself. It's really, really hard to kind of take that 300 foot view and write about yourself from the way you want to be perceived by your customers. But that's a way that you want to think about crafting your profile that it's really, yes, it is about you, but it's really about them, right? You don't write your website about you. You write your website to attract your customer. Same thing. Definitely. How would you advise using LinkedIn to bring people to your website, to your, say, top of funnel? <laughs> Ooh, funnels. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite word. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, you can use the featured section in your profile. So it sits sort of in the middle. And what's nice, this is a newer edition. So I'd say in the last year, maybe it rolled out last year, I can't exactly remember when, um, you can add, there's four options that you can add in here. You can add a link to a post. So if you had a post that, I don't know, you feel really good about, you can you can add that, you can add an article. Those would be two, the first two are things that live on your profile from like content that you've created. You can um, upload media. So you could upload a PDF or a photo or something downloadable but I like to use the links so you can add external links. Um, one of the other things you can do that if you do have a, a newsletter on LinkedIn, you can add that in your featured content and that's a good thing to add as well. But as far as the external links, you can add um, a lead magnet. That's what's in mind. <laughs> you can add a, a call to action to subscribe to your email. Mm -hmm. That's also in mind. It's good to have it very be action oriented versus uh, just like, here's an article I wrote. I can find that in your profile. But if you have something, an action you want your uh, customers to take, that's a great place to put it because it links directly to wherever you're sending them. Right. So it's linking to your assessment. It's linking to your downloadable freebie. It's linking to your email sign up. Um, I also think your company page is a great place to direct people because <clears throat> I think that people kind of follow this path where they land on your profile. They're like, oh, she looks interesting. They scroll to your experience. They see your logo and your company name and they may click on your company page. And on your company page should be a link that takes you to your web, takes them to your website where they can click on it. And you can also update that button so it can say visit website, but it also can say contact us or learn more or get started. I can't remember what the options are, but I generally recommend something other than visit website because visit mm -hmm. website is kind of boring. So I like to use learn more. Um, and you could have that direct to your homepage. You could have that direct to your um, your landing page for whatever your funnel, like lead start thing is, whatever the right words are. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many different things you could call that, honestly. Right. But um, you can really have them go wherever you want them to go in there. And that's why I like to have that learn more versus like visit website. Yeah. So I've been using my featured section to just feature one thing, because I realized that when I put a bunch of featured things, then it's all just sort of crowded together. And I wanted it to be very obvious and like one big thing. Uh, which strategy do you think is a better use of that space? I would do um, two or three. Mm, okay. When you do more than three, you can't see the fourth one. So then people, I don't think people are going to click through a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So I would do two 
two fills the space nicely. One feels lonely to me. Like, I don't have any friends. Um, <laughs> I feel like I need to screen share now and show my LinkedIn profile because uh, it's like talking about it, but not a... Uh... I can picture it though. One just feels like it's like out there on its own. Two looks nice. And then three, you can see three complete ideas of what they are without having to scroll. So, and I think you put them in order of importance. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to have to experiment with that. Yeah, play with it and see. I, I know that I get um, a couple of newsletter subscription, like people subscribe to my LinkedIn newsletter every week. And they must be looking, finding it from my um, profile because I don't know where Is else. Is that something that you manually update or does it put in the most recent newsletter when you have it on your featured? You create, no, it, it just links to like the, the newsletter uh, page, the page where all the editions live. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have been trying to utilize that more, putting my blog posts up as newsletters. Yeah. It's a good question though. I mean, because right, we do want people. Oh, and there's a couple of, wait here. I just forgot there was something else that's new. So another new thing, it's like brand new hot off the press in the last month is you have to do it on mobile. So I personally struggle with creating content on my phone because I don't like typing things on my phone. And so yeah. <laughs> but you know, we're in the same spot there. <laughs> you can now add a link um, on, a, on a photo, on a graphic. Mm. So you maybe you have a cool graphic and then you can add a link to whatever you're trying to get your people to start the whole funnel process through that but is you can put cool. a live link on a, on an image but you have to create it on your phone you can't do it on desktop mm, i'm gonna play with that one too yeah that's a good one that's a fun new one and you can add more than one link so you can add like wow. what and then you can move them around and put them place them where you want them on the photo but that's a fun and, and so many possibilities now it is a oh, fun and surprising what is the right size to make the images on LinkedIn. Because when I go to Canva and I put in LinkedIn image, I feel like the image I get does not look so good on the LinkedIn feed. Yeah. So, I mean, for a photo, it's a photo, right? Should it like be more just... square or should it be more rectangle? Personally, okay. So if I'm it's uploading amazing. a picture, like just a photo, like from this weekend, this week, because I was at the Badass Business Summit, there were tons of pictures, right? You're just uploading a picture from your phone. If I'm creating a graphic, I use an, the Instagram template. I like the square. Okay. And I think the Instagram template, that square size looks really good in the newsfeed. It's easy to click through mm. um, and it stands out. So, but I know there isn't a LinkedIn like template. Yeah, I haven't found also, a good link. <laughs> there is a template for your LinkedIn banner. However, it's for your profile. And of course, the company page banners small it's skinnier it's the different size which is really annoying so <laughs> um when i'm helping like when i create banners for my clients i have like i've created somewhere i i literally have put a line like a i take you know a canva line and just like <laughs> put it where the bottom of the graphic should be because it's just hard to you know, it is. I have to like redo it and experiment right. and keep uploading and, until I get it right. And a lot of the templates in Canva have a lot of stuff in the bottom left corner, and that's always going to be blocked by your profile photo. So, like, you need to keep that left two thirds blank, or whatever you put there is going to be not be able to be seen because your profile photo is going to cover it. So, that's Canva is a little. Yeah, they're problematic they're with that. There's great template. templates. <laughs> yeah, there's great templates to give you some like inspiration, but you need to know, like I've seen it happen where people put this great design together and they're like, huh, <laughs> can't see what's in the bottom left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And encouragingly, going back to the link thing, I did see um, an interview where I believe LinkedIn headquarters said that it doesn't penalize you for having outside links. And this is something that, that I everybody mean, questions all the time. Is it the priority of the platform to keep you on there to, 
and do they kind of suppress links that send you out to another website? Uh, and LinkedIn is claiming they don't. They claim they don't. I think a lot of us don't believe that. Uh, every, uh, I will say like every year, um, there's a brilliant guy based in, um, I think he's in Spain named Richard Vanderblum. He puts an algorithm report together. So the report I believe is coming out sometime in October. You should all follow him. It's like Richard V A N new word D R then B L O M. He's, okay. it's like a three part last name. He's so He's awesome. And the algorithm report is incredible. And it always t is going to talk about links and what, what, what actions does the algorithm like? What actions does the algorithm not like? It changes every single year. Hmm. So it's debatable. The other, the thing though, that is also new, which I forgot to mention is that um, you can also now pin a comment so you can add a comment and then pin it to the top. So you could put your links in there, right? You can mm -hmm. see if, how that works for you. Yeah. It's all about experimenting. It's all see. about experimenting. There's no right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you have created a scorecard to help people determine where their profile has gaps, where it's missing some key components that could really be helping their business. And that's new, right? That's new. Yeah. So I just put this assessment together um, because it's just hard to know. There's so much that goes into uh, your overall strategy, right? We've just been mostly talking about profiles. We haven't even talked about network. We haven't talked about content. We haven't talked about how you engage with people. So there's so many aspects that go into your strategy. Your profile is just the foundation. And, and you know, I like to look, think about it like a pyramid. You've got the profile at the bottom and then everything builds on it to get to whatever your goals are at the top. So um, this assessment, it's pretty quick. It's like, I think, 18 questions. So it should take, you know, three to four minutes to complete. Okay. It's going to go through profile, network, content, engagement. So that people have an, an, an idea of like, what's working? What's not working? Where do I need to spend some time? Where do I maybe need some help? Um, so hopefully... Yeah. So what does it look like, like if people are working with you? Is it like one-on-one -on -one coaching? Are you doing things for them? Like what does that whole thing look like for our Yeah. So I do a couple, I mean, I've got a number of different services. So on the one-on-one -on -one side, yeah, I do um, a lot with the profile. So I have two different profile services. One is an audit mm. where I'm going to kind of, sit with somebody on a Zoom call and walk them through their profile top to bottom and then give them a roadmap of where the, you know, what's working, what's not working, but then they're in charge of the implementation. Um, I also do renovations. So where I do the writing, like I said, it's very hard to write about yourself. Yes, so, renovation. Oh, yes, yeah, so they'll answer questions, respond to prompts, and then I will use those responses to write a few options for headlines to write a draft of the about section to kind of, you know, write a company boilerplate, whatever those various things might be needed. Mm -hmm. And then we'll work on getting it implemented together. I do coaching, um, but I'm really looking, I love my one-on-one -on -one clients and I've worked with so many awesome people, but I'm looking to kind of expand into more group training because a lot of companies, especially those mid-sized companies struggle mightily with what to, how to empower their teams to use LinkedIn. So I think too often it's an assumption that, well, they have a profile, so they must know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> they just need to share the posts on the company page, but there's such an opportunity to kind of amplify and to engage um employees as there there's no better brand ambassador for a company than their employee. So use them on LinkedIn, use them. A lot of sense. Yeah. Right. So you could, a business could hire you to come in and give a training on how to use LinkedIn for each of their employees, how they could be better using it. Yep. Ooh, yeah. that's very I think there's a lot of, uh, and it's not just for, customer acquisition, because so many companies these days struggle with talent acquisition, right? So they, 
want to show their company culture. They want to show that they're a great place to work. And LinkedIn's an, op- an awesome platform to, to showcase that culture because no, there's no better way to see what it's like than by taking a peek at sort of the way that their employees showcase, you know, show up on the platform and talk about their company. Mm, yes. Oh, I love that. So that's, Very cool. Yeah. That's well, we're going to add a link for the assessment. So people, you can all go and do a little quiz and find out where you might have gaps in your LinkedIn that you don't even realize are there. So we will drop that link. And um, do you have any other parting wisdom that you'd like to make sure everybody knows? Uh, you know, my 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 last thought is really that um, LinkedIn is a fun place. Okay, it's fun, and if you're not having fun, it's time to reassess your strategy so that you can find the fun. And the story I'll share is, you know, I was just at this summit in Texas last week, and one of my friends who I only know through LinkedIn, we've never met in person was also coming. Now there are multiple people there, but this one woman I was really excited to meet because we, you know, she's also a LinkedIn trainer. We collaborate on things. We've learned a lot from each other. And we literally ran in the hotel lobby, saw each other, screeched like two, you know, (laughs) best friends who hadn't seen each other in like five years. (laughs) I can picture this happening. Okay, This is, how this is a real friendship that was a hundred percent built on LinkedIn. Like you can build deep relationships with people that are going to make you a better professional and a better human through this platform. Um, And you just need to jump in and have fun with it. That is amazing. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us insights. And I've I've got some stuff to do now. (laughs) (laughs) Time to go down to the next section of my profile to work on. Don't worry. And I, ha- I, I hate to break it to you, but it's never done. It's never uh, done. Oh, no. Just like your website is never yeah, done. Cool. Like, just like, I'm just going to get all my ducks in a row. Everything settled down. And then, then I can really go big. So that's, that's a mindset that I have to shift a little bit. Yeah. That's it's a constant, constant work in progress. But... Too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right. Well, we will say goodbye then. Thank you everyone for watching.